Hey friends, it's Ruben with Hi-Fi MIDI. Thanks for joining me for this live review of Native Instruments Session Basis Prime Bass. I've had this bass for about a little over a week, I would say, and I've been messing around with it. And I'm going to share my thoughts with you and go over the features and sounds and hopefully answer some questions. So if you're out there and you can hear me, please say hi. I'll just wait a little bit for the chat to to become active. So while I wait for that, actually, I'll give you a little bit of information on this. Now, Native Instruments doesn't say what type of bass this is. They say it's an iconic four string bass, or let me, let me read the description. Oh, I, they said it's an iconic single coil electric bass guitar with over 350 playable patterns and phrases across a range of genres. Hey Austin, hey Janice, thank you for joining. And um, but from the looks of it, it looks like a Fender P bass. Um, I played this track to a friend of mine who's a bassist, and without even seeing the picture of the bass, he said that sounds like a P bass. So if you know out there, if you know what it is, based on looking at it, just let me know in the comments what kind of bass you think it is regardless of what type of bass it is this thing is phenomenal um, I'm gonna after I give you the uh, or talk about the features and make a demo of the sounds um, I'm gonna share my thoughts on it and and tell you who I think this is made for because um, native instrument has a target audience it seems but anyway let's let's get let's get into it so how big is this sample library? This sample library is about nine gigabytes in total download size. I think that's uncompressed. And it was really easy to install. You have to use a native access app. Uh, you just enter your serial number and then click download and then it, th then it automates the entire process for you. So, um, as far as graphic user interface, I think this is a very beautiful design. As, as always, Native Instruments hires really good designers. It's The interface is very simple. You have your main categories laid out on the bottom, and then you have your, your menus here. Is there two pickups on it? Um, I'll get to that. Hey, Invasion. So let me go ahead and click out of the box. I like that. I like that they have that option. This is what it sounds like out of the box. So my friend told me based on that clicky transient kind of a bark it sounds like a P bass now this library comes with two modes it comes with the melody and it comes with the pattern mode I'm going to stick to the melody just like the last video of uh, Session Guitarist because melody has the articulations, the playable articulations, but it also has a pattern bank as well. Now, the the pattern library has eight banks or um, eight slots that you can choose your own patterns and put them into. But this is going to show you both, so I'm going to stick to this. This bass comes with a plectrum and a finger sound, so I'll toggle between those two 
Let me just zoom in on it really quickly. Whoops, where'd it go? There you go. I think it was already zoomed in. Okay. That's it. That's the problem with trying to run your own video and sound at the same time, but I shouldn't complain. All right, so on C1, we have open sound, and this is going to be your regular sustained sound. So the lowest note on this is C2. And then the highest note is going to be B4. Now you can actually change the fret position on this to get different timbres. I don't think that... Wait. Oh, you know what? Um, it shows me right here. I was trying to find a way to assign this to a MIDI, MIDI CC, but you can actually change the fret position. This is great right here. This is actually... Uh, this changed my opinion on this, actually. I wasn't sure that you could change it... Um, within your DAW or, uh, or on your controller, but you can. So one of my complaints about some like a uh, plugin like Easy Bass is that they don't have samples of different frets on different strings. Um, B4 mm -hmm. is going to be the same B4 sound on every fret and string. But on this one, you have those different options. And that's great. And you can change it within your song. So if you wanted a very mellow, rounded sound, you can choose the higher frets. And then if you want a barkier, more open tone, you can choose the lower frets. So I'm going to play a little bit of that for you. All right, let's listen to the plectrum, which is a pick. This has a um, brighter attack sound. This bass kind of sounds really dirty to me and not in a bad way, meaning that it has a lot of harmonic frequencies in it that would cut through the mix really well. But maybe on some songs, you might not want that sound. The good thing is that there's a lot of presets that you can use that take advantage of like amp simulators and cabs so you can get a darker tone if you want. There's also poly and mono mode. So poly, you're going you're gonna to be able to play multiple notes at the same time. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the keyboard. Hopefully you'll be able to see that clearly. Good. In the keyboard menu or the keyboard window, you can see the playable notes, which are in blue. I know it's a, it's not exactly blue. So that shows you your C2 to B4. And then these yellow keys are going to be your articulations. The red keys are going to be your pattern switches. And then your purple keys are going to be your note endings or starts. And then this is just a slide key switch. I'll get to that later. So let's go ahead and listen to... Uh, oh yeah, I was talking about poly, polyphonic. So you can play multiple notes at the same time. But usually bass plays monophonically, especially when, it, when you're playing with the band. So mono is a good mode. And... I was testing out the hammer-on pull-off. I wanted to make sure that this had hammer-on pull-off. And in mono, you can actually hear that, but it has a, a limited speed. So I'm going to play that for you. And if you don't know what hammer-on pull-off is, um, when you're playing a string instrument or like a bass or guitar, and you, you, you're you holding down one note, and you pluck the string on the right hand, um, and you play a second note, instead of playing, instead of re-plucking it, you're just plucking both notes you're playing both notes on one pluck. So it's going to have this very short transition sound. So this is without hammer-on. And if I use a sustain pedal, 
I can get that hammer on pull off sound. The only thing I don't like about that is that it doesn't get quieter over time, like on a real bass. Eventually, the string loses its moment momentum, so uh, the sound doesn't just continue unless I I think you have very powerful fingers. But you have to get the timing just right because sometimes like I can hear that note restriking. All right, let's go on with the other articulations. Here is muted, which is C-sharp 1 on the keyboard. And this, you can also change the fret. Another great thing about muted is that I believe you can change the mute time. Ho hopefully I'm right. Bass settings, so damping. Here's a long damping, short. So if you want to play like funk music. There's a little bit of latency on my keyboard, so I'm not getting that perfectly. Let me see if that damping works on the sustain. Can you hear that release sound? When I let go of the, the key, there's a release sound. I like that. I'm going to leave that right here. Let's listen to it on, let's listen to the mute on uh, Plectrum. Back to finger. So you get more of those lows coming back in with the muted, with the finger muted. That sounds really nice. And then here are the harmonics, flagellate. Flagellate. I don't know how to say that. I still don't know how to say that. I should look up the word. Here, I'm going to go ahead and put poly because I like harmonizing these. Now, I realize that's not possible with a four string guitar because I played like five notes. But it's good if you want to create effects with the bass sound. And this one you can also change the fret position. And then let's hear it with plectrum. So that, of course, is brighter. Then on D sharp one, we have slap and pop. So if this is interesting, I didn't notice this before, but I thought this was just a key switch. But if you press it and then you press it again, it sounds like you get a ghost note. So slap and pop doesn't allow you to go between plectrum and finger because you can't really pop with a pick, I don't think. Let me try to get that ghost note in there. I'm 
I'm trying to figure out if it's a, a slap or a pop because usually pops is when you pull the string and it's done on the higher notes. <laughs> Yeah, that sounds like a pop to me. I'm sure it will sound a lot slappier with the effects so we'll go get to that later that one you can also change the fret position all right let's go into the effects before i go to the patterns and the effects are tied to the patterns. so if you go up here look up here on the song motor city i'm not sure what that's supposed to be maybe it's supposed to be motown sound you guys tell me what you think <laughs> Sounds like a synth more than a bass guitar. Uh, I have to dis disagree with you there. It has all the markings of a, I mean, it's sampled from a bass. So if I play this, that's literally a bass player playing that note. Unless you're talking about the pop sound. Anyway. So we have a list of songs here that you can choose from, and they're, they're going to change the sound presets up here on the right corner if it's linked to the song. If you unlink it, it's going to keep the same sound preset. So here is Slap Funk. It's here on the higher frets. That sounds a lot better than being on the fifth fret. All right, I'm going to link it, link it back to the song. Here's a classic rocker. It'll probably sound better with the pick. Funk machine. I'm trying to find one that I like. called rage bass so as you can hear there's a lot of rock and and funk basses so far or funk presets here's rock wall doom bass sounds pretty cool more, probably more like for metal i think doom bass has something to do with the game somebody tell me if i'm right i've never played that game but i remember another plugin had a doom button and then funky fingers here's latin bass i'm not sure why the latin bass has uh some, some distortion to it if I had a Latin bass preset, I would probably make it sound really bubbly and round and warm. This has a little bit of grit to it. All right, next one. Funky thumb. Oh, R&B, finally something different. Oh, this one's nice. So 
we'll go over more presets later. Another thing I forgot to mention, and I covered the keys, is are the uh, the effects or the note endings. So the first one is G sharp, G sharp one, and that slides upward. This is velocity sensitive. So if I press it with a fast velocity or high velocity, it's going to go up quickly. If I press it a little slower, it goes a little slower. But if I don't play any note and I only play this, this ending, you're just going to hear a slide, general slide. The next key is A1, and that's going to slide down. That one is also velocity sensitive. I like this. I like the fact that it's there. The, my only issue is that there is um, there is some lack of control as far as like say if I'm going from D down to A, the timing is not always going to be right if I'm sliding down. The slide may actually pass A. So you can hear that that transition. You can hear that um, abrupt abrupt note. It doesn't fall on A like if you had a, a bass that had a legato slide to that specific note. So that would be something that you'd have to edit in your MIDI editor, get the timing right. Uh, the same goes for sliding upward. The next key is, it's actually not a slide, um, I thought it was a slide. This is like body hits. The thing I like about this is that it cuts off the note. All right, Maddie, see you later. Thanks for joining. Let me see if this is velocity sensitive. Unfortunately, this one isn't. On their guitars, there is a difference between the these hits right here. This is called slide. No, this, this can't be slide key switch. Unless it's because it's on mono. Hold on. Slide key switch. That doesn't make. Why is it not sliding? This is more like a hit or like a tap. And then this one is a slide key switch. So if you play it before a note, it slides into the note, but that slide is not that great sounding. Let me try a different preset, actually. Um, I'm going to go to Clean Ballad. Oh, that's interesting. So... If I play a note by itself, it slides up to it. But if I go down to a note, it slides down to it, or it, it, uh, it has a grace note that goes down to the note. Oh, wow. This is actually an improvement over the, the other slides on their previous plugins. I am hearing a little bit too much of that fret sound, the, the, the metal part of the fret. Well, the fret is metal, 
but if um there's this little bump in the sound let's hear it on mono maybe it's gonna sound better let's hear it on a higher fret okay now let's go into the bass settings because I, I want to see what this does let me uh, change this preset real, real quick modern tube so you can change the amount of drive in this like a tube amp if you raise the gain on it it's going to distort you can make the sound darker so it becomes brighter and then you have two mics, which I think these are for the cabs. No, um, actually you can hear a lot of the string on this. That's very interesting. You could pan that as well. Let me hear the other mic. And let's hear them combined. So you're going to hear more of the body effects sound, like the actual acoustic sound. I should have known that based on the other plugins because they have a mic sound as well. That's very interesting. I guess it's so that you can feel like you're actually there with the bass, even though you're not holding it. All right, we went over damping and then noise. We have our fret noise. Now, I got to be careful with this one because there is a misnomer in the guitar sample library world where fret noise is the sound of when you, whenever you change to a different note, they add this little squeak in there, and that's the sound of the string slide. So it should actually be called a string slide noise, but we call it fret noise because it's just a habit. Um, it's become adopted. So I don't know if they're talking about that or if they're talking about the actual stepping sound whenever you're going from, from uh, whenever you're sliding. So it says, control the, control the volume of noises produced by placing the fingers on the strings as well as sliding on the fretboard. So let's hear that. So you hear that little squeak in there? Not the actual note of the bass. I'm going to take it off. And I'm put it back on. I wish I could isolate that sound. I heard it in there though. And the noise floor is going to be the sound of this, the bass pickups. Uh, I don't hear it. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I had to play a note. So when I play the note, there's a hiss. Let me know if you can hear that. All right, I'll turn it off. I don't really care for that noise. And then there's a tuning. Precise to sloppy. Now you have your... Uh, your amp and effects slots here where you can add distortion modulation like chorus phaser uh, rotary and then you have your compressors eqs amp, different amps i'm not sh i'm not really familiar with bass amps and um there must be an ampeg one maybe the, uh, this is a fender i think bass pro um some of you might know what it is and then there's reverb and delay and we're going to listen to those different presets Oops, I'm getting a call during a live. Then in the playback, this is going to apply to patterns, whether you want it to be quantized. And I'll get back to this, actually. So I'm going to go back to patterns. And patterns are going to be the red keys. So this is going to follow. Now you don't have to play chords, but this is going to follow the key that you're in. And it's already there's already preset performances in this. But first, I'm going to read some of the comments. I think the best slap sound is from acoustic samples, basses. I've never heard of that. 
I play bass and play slap bass. None of the sounds here s sound like a real bass guitar at all. Same as most plugins. A bass guitar is not that trebly for a slide. I agree with that. All of acoustic sample guitars are great. The Strat, okay. And notice that the vibrato indicator seems to randomly light up, especially with the busy high velocity sequence of notes. Is that part of the functionality? Um, I didn't notice that, but you know what? Let me... Oh, so the vibrato is lighting up because this has aftertouch. So you can you can adjust vibrato with the mod wheel. I don't know if you can hear that that raspy sound of, of the strings sliding against the fingerboard or the fretboard. Let me take out the sound of the frets. That way you can hear that clearly. However, it also has aftertouch. Some keyboards have aftertouch, some don't. Aftertouch is whenever you already play a note and then you just press it a little bit harder, there's some extra sensors in there that sense how much you're pushing it. So you can see I still have my finger on the key, but I'm pressing it a little harder. When I hold it down all the way, I get the vibrato. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me that acoustic samples J bass sounds great. They make really good stuff. All right, let's start listening to the uh, the patterns here. Here's E1. Of course, this is going to follow the tempo of your DAW. Let's hear the other ones. This sounds like reggae, so I'm thinking uh, Bob Marley. doesn't hit on one that's how I know it's reggae one two three four one two three four all right let's go to the next one Here's hard slap. Let's see how good their slapping is. That doesn't sound as round as I would like it to. So let's hear a different one. So this is set to one pitch. Let me see if I can change that. Oh, I see. It shows you if it's one pitch or if it's a phrase. So F sharp one has multiple notes. And this is what I like about it is that you can set it to snap back automatically to the melody articulations. So if you have a pattern going, you can let it go and then play the melody. That's a good feature right there. And then lust for bass. Does anybody have lust for bass? I'm just kidding. Now, if you're searching for the pattern, the right pattern for your song, you can go into this, uh, click into this magnifying glass, 
And as I've mentioned in other videos, there's a there's a filter here. So you can click your your um click these notes right here. One. Let's see the and of two. And of three. Something like that. Let's see what's what's close to that. That's not really close to that, but maybe because I chose a difficult rhythm. So it will start updating the list to, to things that sound similar to what you selected. Here's the lat gumbao. I believe there's a way to, to double the, the timing of the sound. Let me see if I can find that. So here is tempo, there's one to one, there's times two. Let's listen to that. <laughs> that sounds horrible. Hold on. Oh, I'm sorry. I was looking for the the Latin the Latin sound. Latin tumbao. I saw it here somewhere. I thought it was going to be in alphabetical order. Nope. Um, I wish there was a way to type it in, actually. Tumbao. There it is. So I replaced that. Let me listen to that. Let me hear how that sounds. Double the speed. See that bass that bass sound sounds a little better to me. Okay, um what else? So if you're a person that likes designing every articulation, like let's say for, uh, for example, like Ample Sound Bass, uh, there are other basses actually do it too, where you can change all those little nuanced articulations and Easy Bass. Um, this is, I think this is more tailored for beginners or people that, that want some inspiration uh, or they want an idea on which they can develop or create new ideas. Let's listen to Big Thump. All right, Session Guitars reminds me of a U-Jam. They are good when it comes to patterns, but for playing solos, acoustic samples, and shredded guitars shine better in that area. And the new nylon guitar by Piano Book is great too. Y'all should check it out. I have the Ample J Bass. Yeah, so these, to be honest, um, some of these presets are not very inspiring. However, let's hear how it sounds if you're trying to play a solo on it. Oh, no, let me just switch to poly, sorry. I want to get rid of that drive. I don't like that drive. So yeah, this is not meant to sound like, it's not meant to be a solo bass. It 
to me, this is a composition bass. It's something that will you can get away. Um, if I I'm gonna play this track real, real quick, you can get away with letting it sit behind the band and filling in those notes. <laughs> Like in that case, I think this sounds great, fantastic. But if you're creating a song where the bass is featured or if you want complex articulation changes, um, that's going to be a lot harder to do, if not impossible on this. That actually sounded really good to me. But... That's the thing, you have to have it covered in order to trick the ear. So if you're out there, what do you think about how it sounds with, with the band? Because in my opinion, it is easy to tell that it's a sample library when you're listening to it by itself, when you hear the note transitions or the articulation switches. However, whenever you're playing with other instruments on top, I think it really cuts through. And you can't really hear those little transition um, I wouldn't call them mistakes. I would just say there, you can you can hear the seams in the sounds. Does that make sense? All right. Um, I'm gonna try to choose. I'm gonna choose something interesting. So experimental Mars flute. That's pretty cool. Oh, it's pretty cool. It's not something I think I'd use personally. Here's broken amp. It's not a guitar, so I'll play low. But bass and whistles. Oh, this is cool. Roads. Take that sub. Ah, oh, that's cool. These are the cool effects. I, I think it makes the, the plugin a lot more interesting. This is a place, a space Kodo. That would sound really great on a guitar. Noisy hanger. That sounds like something that you would use in a trailer or in a in an action film. Mm. 
has a very distant sound and it has a very slow attack. Deep wide sub. I wish the notes went higher than this. It sounds like it should. Now this sounds like a synth because that's a synth filter. Let's check what this octave button does. If enabled, the bass will be tuned down by one octave. Okay, we don't need that. Uh, and then it goes back to DI. Let's hear the high gain. This is for more for like metal and rock. That sounds really clear. Actually, I like that sound. Because even with distortion, you can hear the pitch. Doom light. why that first note sounded like really punchy so I didn't go over all of the, the grooves I think that's a major part of this so I'm gonna play some more and then I'm gonna give you my thoughts on the entire plugin and if you like a groove simply Drag it into your doll like this. Whoops, <laughs> that was the wrong track. This is the benefit of this of this type of plugin is how easy it is to to drag grooves into your doll or build your song. The only problem is uh, the limitation of having patterns. I think they're more for, for if you're if you're wanting an idea, um, because otherwise, if you're trying to get it to fit your song, if you already have a song that you've composed, and you're trying to make something fit your song, you're gonna have to change some things around, and you're gonna have to use the melody section more than likely. Another thing you you would be able to do is um, is shift the pattern around. Let's say the groove is not. It's not fitting the timing of your hits. You can select this and shift it around by, you can choose how long it's going to be. Let's say I choose E1. You can choose how, you can shift it back and forth. You can choose how long it's going to be, and then you can choose whether it's half tempo, normal tempo, or twice as fast. I think the sample sounds are great on this. The effects, of course, because it uses contact effects, I think they sound really nice, and they're very easy to use. Uh, the graphic user interface is beautiful. My complaints about this are those transitions, those transitions from, um, from note to note, like the slides, the fret noise is really loud on it. I would like to he hear less of that because I think it sounds smoother. But those things can be cut out with EQ. Um, usually when I when I EQ a bass, I like to take out the really, really low end, um, sub 30 hertz, and I take out some of the high end so that I hear more of the, the some of the low and a lot of mids so that you can hear that definition. It all depends on 
the the type of music as well. Is there a MIDI drop feature? Yes, uh, MIDI drop. So you can click on this little cross right here and then drag it into your your DAW. But it doesn't have the um, the extended techniques that other libraries have nowadays. This is why I think this is for um, people who are beginner to intermediate. Professionals can use it if you want a quick idea thrown out there. You know, you're just going to use the, the sustain samples. That It's good for that. But if you're doing more complex stuff, if you're controlling the uh, slap on a specific string, a specific um, fret, changing to another note, legato sliding to a specific note, getting that timing just right, it's going to be a little bit harder doing it on this because um, they just give you general slide speeds uh, or general uh, general sounds. That said, it is high quality sound um, and it's very easy to use. So friends, if you like this review and, uh, and thought it was helpful, give this video a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe and hit that notification bell. I will be posting more Native Instrument videos soon. If you feel like you like this plugin and want to purchase it, I have created an affiliate link. Um, I want to just want to be transparent in the description of the video. A small percentage goes to my channel. So you help support me in doing this. Uh, let me know your thoughts on this and I'll see you next time. Thank you very much.